Hey friend, welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll be looking into the top 10 affordable audio interfaces. We'll be discussing some of the key aspects of each interface, like the cost, the quality of the preamps, and other features. So stick around for the full video, but first, if this is a topic that you find interesting, I'd highly recommend looking into the blog post that's associated with this video. In it, you'll find a lot more information on this topic, so simply scroll down to the description box below for a link. Also, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you have to do is set up the short account, upload the song, and we will do the rest. Number 10 is the RME Babyface Pro. Now, if you value flexibility and mobility in your interface, then the RME Babyface Pro is a great introduction into RME's line of Pro Class interfaces. Now, it's introductory in its price, but the RME Babyface Pro offers a great and transparent sound, as well as an intuitive DAW and operating interface. The interface's connectivity includes two mic preamps or XLR inputs, two XLR outputs, a headphone quarter inch or eighth inch output, two instrument inputs, and ADAC connectivity for an additional eight-channel input or output, as well as a MIDI and USB connection. The RME Babyface Pro is bus-powered, meaning it can be powered by your USB connection. That being said, it makes it a perfect interface on the go to bring to band practices or to record a live set. At number nine is the Roland Studio Capture. With 12 XLR and quarter-inch inputs, 24-bit, 192 kilohertz analog to digital conversion, coaxial input and outputs, MIDI and USB connectivity, the Roland Studio Capture gives you an immense amount of recording options. Furthermore, a high-pass filter, compressor, phase inverter, reverb processor, phantom power, and auto sense gain function are easily accessed via the front of the interface. Now, perhaps the most interesting function of the interface is the aforementioned auto sense, which measures the incoming signal or signals of any connected microphones or instruments and automatically adjust the gain to best capture the signal. All you or the artist you're recording needs to do is briefly perform the material and the Roland Studio Capture will find the best levels to match their energy. Number eight is the Tascam Celesonic. Similar to the Roland Studio Capture, the Tascam Celesonic is a great option for any engineer looking to record larger projects or live shows. The versatile design of the Tascam Celesonic includes its DSP and DAW software, allow it to be used as a recording interface or a live mixer with exceptionally low latency. The Ultra HDDA mic preamps recreate a transparent signal while the software makes routing easy for any application. At number seven, we have the PreSonus Studio 1810C. The newest studio series from PreSonus is a great software and hardware package that offers a great introduction into audio recording with professional sounding equipment and convenient, easy to learn recording software. The PreSonus Studio 1810C comes with the latest version of Studio One, PreSonus' DAW package that includes plug-in bundles and stock plugins to get you started. Mini connectivity means you can plug in your keyboard or software instrument and begin to record. Additionally, this particular PreSonus interface includes four XLR inputs with XMAX preamps, two instrument inputs, and eight line outputs, including two headphone outputs. This makes it a professional sounding introductory interface that still offers multiple routing and recording options. Six is the PV6 mixer. For those who are more accustomed to live sound, the PV6 mixer is an affordable and familiar option for both live and recording applications. Not only does the PV6 operate like a traditional live sound mixer and retain all the functionality of one, it can convert its analog signal to a digital one via a USB connection. So if you're looking for a way to add some analog sound to a signal prior to recording it, the PV6 mixer is a great option. With two XLR inputs with phantom power, left and right channel three band equalizers, and an output compressor, you'll be able to record as well as process your signal, all while becoming accustomed to the sound of analog. Number five is the Universal Audio Apollo Twin MK2 Solo. Now this interface is one that you may be more familiar with as it's proven to be one of the most popular and sought after introductory interfaces of the last decade. With two mic line inputs and an optical connection for additional preamps, as well as four line outputs, the Apollo Twin is relatively simplistic in terms of its routing options. But as you may know, this interface is known for its processor, which allows for UAD plugins and software to be run from the actual interface. This means less CPU usage and the possibility to run UAD's widely acclaimed software. 
And number four is the Apogee Element 46. At first, not having a control panel may seem unconventional, if not slightly off-putting, but the Apogee Element 46, as well as the other Apogee interfaces in the Element line offer exceptional quality, all while being completely software-driven. The Element software tied to this interface allows you to control your signal in all the ways a traditional interface would, but now with the extra flexibility that software can provide, such as a customizable user interface and advanced routing and processing options prior to recording. In terms of connectivity, the Apogee Element 46 offers four XLR or line inputs, two headphone outputs, an optical input and output with two XLR outputs for monitoring. Where the Apogee Element 46 really shines is in its transparent but not bland mic preamps and its fantastic analog to digital conversion. With 75 dB of available gain and incredibly low noise and distortion, the Apogee Element 46 and the other Apogee Element interfaces are a great upgrade interface for anyone taking the recording seriously. Number three is PreSonus Quantum 2. And when you can afford the flagship interface of a reputable company like PreSonus, that's something they get excited about. 24-bit, 192 kHz conversion with some of the lowest latency of any interface makes the PreSonus Quantum 2 stand apart from other interfaces in a similar price range. The classic PreSonus X-Max preamp sounds great while offering an unheard of 80 dB of gain and the option for preamp recall. The PreSonus Quantum 2 offers four mic line inputs and four line outputs. Additionally, it offers an ADAT input and output and MIDI connections. Multiple optical ins and outs offers immense flexibility. Additionally, multiple Thunderbolt outputs creates the possibility of daisy chaining your quantum interfaces together, increasing your flexibility and expandability if the need should arise. Number two is the IK Multimedia Axe IO. If you're a guitar or a bass player and you're frequently disappointed with the sound of plugging your guitar into your interface, then the IK Multimedia Axe IO is an affordable solution. By utilizing a variable impedance knob and a switch for adding subtle harmonic generation, the IK Multimedia Axe I.O. can take a clean and boring DI guitar and add the life that your guitar or bass has been missing. By increasing the impedance of your DI, this interface makes your amp modeling sound more realistic and enjoyable. Additionally, the IK Multimedia Axe I.O. has two XLR inputs with phantom power so you can record vocals or any other instrument. Now, although the primary focus of this interface is creating more realistic amp modeling, two Class A preamps make this interface a fully realized interface capable of recording whatever you need to complete your recording project. And lastly, at number one is the Audient ID14. Now, if you've been looking around for an affordable interface, perhaps an upgrade from your Focusrite Scarlett or PreSonus AudioBox, odds are you've come across this interface and for good reason. Sporting two Class A inputs from their ASP8024 console, Burr Brown converters, and a JFET DI, the Audient ID14 covers all the bases. No matter what you're recording, you can achieve impressive sound quality with this bus powered interface. The Audient ID14 offers two XLR slash line inputs with 56 dB of available gain, a JFET DI, a headphone output, left and right monitor line outputs, and an optical input for increased flexibility. Additionally, the phantom power has been isolated to each respective XLR input, meaning you can connect a condenser microphone to one input and a ribbon to another without the risk of damaging your ribbon microphone. But what do you think? Do you agree with our list? If so, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, again, definitely check out the blog post where you can find even more information on these interfaces. Follow the link in the description to find that. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you have to do is set up this super easy to create account, upload the song, and we will do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. That way you stay up to date on all of our latest releases. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you again so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.